वेलकम टू एपिसोड 45 फाइव ऑफ द थ्री एम फीयर पॉडकास्ट इमेजिन दिस यू आर टायर्ड इट्स बीन अ लॉन्ग डे यू आर वॉकिंग डाउन दिस ओ सेज ट्रेल डार्कनेस इज स्प्रेडिंग ऑल अराउंड ऑल यू वॉन्ट टू डू इज हैव अ हॉट मील एंड अ प्लेस टू स्लीप यू सी द स्मॉल इन यू हैड हर्ड अबाउट इट और मे बी यू डिंट एज सुन एज यू सी दिस इन यू फील अ साई ऑफ रिलीफ योर फीट आर किलिंग यू and all you want to do is rest you walk towards the inn and you are greeted by this amazing family an older couple and their two children a young boy and a young girl they invite you into their home and offer you a delicious meal they even offer you a great seat at their long dining table just behind the chair is a sheet of cloth behind which the family says that it's their place you sit there you're relaxed and you're ready to eat and just as you are about to take your first bite you feel something you hear this voice and before you could react you collapse you have been just struck with a hammer unknowingly you had just stepped in into the inn of america's first serial killer family the bloody benders and now you have no way out hello and welcome to the 3 am fear podcast i'm nikita ferrao mystery and thriller author On this podcast I talk about real crimes and real people. Due to the graphic nature of some of this content, listener discretion is advised. You can find the episode show notes on my website 3amfear.com. Let's get started. In October of 1870, an older couple and a younger man arrived at the trading post of Edward Earn and Rudolf Brockman in Osage Township, Kansas. The younger man, John Gabbard, who was probably 20 years old, introduced the older man as John Bender, referred to as Pa Bender, and the older woman as Ma Bender. To this day, no one knows what Ma Bender's real name is. The younger woman, Kate or Katie Bender, was described as pretty with long red hair though assumed to be a family some locals suspected that there was some kind of a romantic relationship between john and katie even though they called themselves siblings they didn't act that way around each other the benders chose 160 acres of land between hills known today as the bender mounds along the osage trail this trail existing for centuries as a trading route played an important role in establishing communities along its path the section in focus covered 47 miles between st paul and independence with rough terrain and dense forests it was difficult for someone to travel especially during bad weather and that's what made the bender family very profitable they had just opened a bnb a bed and breakfast So according to the Homestead Act that was there at that time it was said if anyone lived at a property grew their crops and made a living out of it then that property could be theirs and that's why many people from all over would come to this place to settle and that's also how the benders landed here the benders were odd balls from the get go the father sometimes called as John or William Bender was a massive guy with a gruff voice and not a speck of friendliness people thought that he was of german descent and he didn't talk much with anyone his wife ma bender wasn't any friendlier she was in her 50s and was described as big and unattractive and she always looked angry they had two grown kids john junior and kate who were also a part of this weird family now the benders had built this small cabin close to the osage trail It was just 10 feet away. Inside this cabin, they had divided it using a canvas sheet. 
The back of the cabin would be the family sleeping area. The front was a public space, it housed an inn and also had a store selling basic supplies. Travellers who were very tired would often come in looking for a hot meal and maybe some supplies to carry with them. The trail was naturally isolated. If you had to get from one place to another, you would have to walk or ride all alone. And sometimes it would get dark, people would get tired and they just needed a place to relax. The Bender family house was there, right there. All they had to do was go in. The Bender family would invite them, would give them a hot meal. And if they were too tired, they could just sleep over, get up the next morning and then pack up and go. Ma and Pa Bender mostly spoke German, rarely using English. They were unfriendly, they would often scowl at people and they occasionally chased travellers away. Now you would ask a question, if they were so rude, why would people want to stay there? That's the whole point. The cabin was so close to the main route that it was ideal for a traveller to go and ask them if they could spend the night. But there was also one more thing about the Bender family that brought in more and more people. And that was their daughter, Kate or Katie. As I said before, John and Kate Bender were the youngest of the family. They were good friends, but their relationship puzzled people. They were too close to each other, especially in public. The kind of closeness that you don't often get to see in brothers and sisters. There was this gossip going around that they were not actually brother and sister and that they were a married couple. Now talking about Kate, Kate had a warm personality and that was one of the main reasons why these travellers, who were mostly men, would end up coming and staying at the B&B. Many people said that maybe this whole so-called charming personality of Kate wasn't just because she was charming, it was because she was trying to lure people into their house. Maybe it was a ploy, it was a plot to get more and more people to trust her. That is a possibility. But here's the horrifying part. They didn't just mind their own business. They set up a trap for travellers, killing them for who knows how long until they made their one mistake. One day, they murdered someone that they shouldn't have and this person turned out to be a very important personality. And that was the end for the benders. What's wild about this story is that it happened when crime scene photography had just started. So there is actual proof, actual photographic evidence of their crimes. It's a creepy slice of history from a long time ago and it's something that makes you wonder how far did those benders go to commit these crimes and for what? Pa Bender and his son John Jr. were the first to arrive. They started building on the land, setting up a small homestead with chicken coops, fencing and a house. They even built a cellar beneath the house with a tunnel connecting to it. Later on, Ma Bender and Kate would join in. With their property right by the Osage Trail, they decided to turn this place into an inn and a grocery store. They put up a sign calling it grocery and they tried to attract as many tired travellers as they could. When they first arrived, Kate Bender began advertising herself in the local papers as a trans medium. She said that she had the power to heal and she also could talk to the other side. She would go around on local tours of the area, lecturing about spiritualism and free love in order to promote her business. She would invite them to come to her house and then she would offer to communicate with the other side for them. Now talking about John Jr., John Jr. was well known for having his strange giggling fits, leading some locals to suspect that maybe he had some learning difficulties or he had some speech problems. And when talking about giggling fits, I'm not saying that he would laugh at random strangers. He would laugh maybe twice or thrice in one sentence. It was as if he had a very hard time controlling himself. And that's what led many people to believe that maybe he had some kind of a disability, something that the benders never opened up about. Many rumours and theories about the family have come up over the years. And these rumours include 
saying that maybe the family was not as related as they said. Some believe that Ma and Pa Bender might have been siblings and not married, and that Kate and John were not actually siblings, but they were married to each other. Now, these theories have never been confirmed. We just know them because people say that Kate and John Jr. acted quite weird around each other. They were uncomfortably close. Now, talking about the Bender Family Inn, their home turned in became a one stop place for travelers, providing supplies, meals, and a place to rest. But this seemingly normal place had a very sinister and dark history to it. In the Bender's house, a chilling and hidden horror would unfold. Travelers passing through this place would stop for a meal and a place to rest, only to meet a tragic fate. At least 11 people fell victim to the Bender's murderous schemes along the Osage Trail. But the actual count may have been far, far higher. We just don't know. Soon after settling on their new land, a local trading post owner named Edward Earn was preparing to marry a woman from Germany. He was also splitting from his business partner, Rudolf Brockman. Remember, in the beginning I told you about Edward Earn and Rudolf Brockman? They were now separating from their business. During this time, Edward brought his fiancée and his mother to stay with the benders while he searched for a new plot of land. Initially, everything was going good, especially with Edward's future wife and her mother who bonded with the Benders very well. The Benders spoke the same language and this was the perfect bonding moment for them. The younger Benders, John and Kate, were particularly friendly. But something happened. One day, while walking, Ma Bender said that she was too tired and she didn't want to continue walking and she wanted to go back home. When Edward's future mother-in-law returned, she couldn't find her jewellery box or her $3,200 in cash. The Benders denied their involvement. They said that we didn't do anything. But no one could find these items anywhere. Despite no evidence, suspicion still lingered. And there was no proof to say that the Benders did anything. As simple as this was, the Bender family was not simply known as the Bloody Benders. They did have their MO. Whenever a guest arrived to stay, the first thing that the Bender family would do was talk nicely to the guest to find out exactly how much this person was carrying with them. At that time, people were either buying land, setting up their home, they were trying their best to provide for their families. And in order to do this, you would usually see the male member of the family who would be travelling this trail in order to set everything up and then bring the rest of the family with him. So the wife and the kids would be back at home, while the male member would be here trying to set everything up. And because the male member was travelling alone and had a lot of purchases, lot of work to be done, this person would either be carrying a lot of jewellery or a lot of money or any life saving that they would have, they would be carrying with them. And this was perfect for the benders. All they had to do was be nice, smile, get these travellers to come in, relax talk to them, ask them about what they are planning to do, how are they planning to do, and just figure out how much money or how much gold they were carrying with them. And not just this, they would also try to figure out if there was a possibility of someone who would come looking for them. Usually, these men would come from very poor houses, so there hardly would be anyone who would try to track them down. And because it was back in the 1800s, there were no mobile phones to call and tell. So once a man left his house in order to get his work done, there would be no way of him to communicate back home about where he was. The wife would sometimes wait for months and unfortunately if this person came across the Bender house, the wife may be waiting forever. So let's get back to the Bender family. Once the family realized that this person had any money or any gold with them, they would first engage in a very friendly conversation. As I said before, there was a curtain in the living room that divided the Bender family house from their guests. Now, right in front of the curtain would be the dining table. And just next to the curtain would be one chair for the dining table. The victim would be seated on this chair with their backs against the curtain. So they had no idea what was happening behind the curtain 
or if anyone was seated behind the curtain kate would then start talking to the victim and once she realized that yes this person is the perfect fit she would give a signal and that's when pa bender or john junior would suddenly appear from back and brutally hack this person using a hammer once the person was attacked and knocked out the body was then dragged through a trap door into the cellar beneath the house down in the cellar ma bender or kate would ensure that the victim was before slitting their throats it was a horrifying scene an unthinkable one and all of this was happening while the benders were this nice little family who sometimes had some issues but were a nice welcoming family for the travelers after the brutal attack the benders would strip the victims of all their valuables and even their clothes leaving the bodies in the cellar until they figured out what to do with them kate's popularity in the area played a big role in attracting these travelers you would usually see these travelers going to these small shops and maybe asking them about where they could spend the night and because kate was so popular most of the people directed these poor travelers to the bender family house By 1871 the benders ran there in without any issues but there were often some complaints about how dirty that place was there was dust and grime everywhere the place was filled with flies and there was this disgusting smell in the air despite all these conditions travelers still stopped by many came because of kate's popularity while others were so tired and this place was right next to the main road that they had to take that it just felt like it's one night how hard could it be to survive one night in this dirty place one evening kate invited julia to a séance at the bender cabin when julia arrived she expected more people to be there but it was just her and kate Kate claimed that because they were talking to spirits spirits preferred fewer people to be there so Julia didn't think much about it now at that time Kate had asked Julia to sit down at the special spot and then close her eyes but Julia couldn't concentrate now remember at this point it was just Julia and Kate so Kate had now asked Julia to sit down close her eyes and concentrate but because julia couldn't concentrate she suddenly opened her eyes and there standing before her were three other bender family members pa bender was there holding a large hammer in his hand sensing danger she quickly made an excuse and ran from the cabin the bender family chased behind her gunshots were heard and julia escaped into the dark she believed that the bender family was trying to kill her and she never returned again that was probably their first attempt because after that more and more travelers began to disappear at the osage trail in 1871 james mary and their youngest son arrived in baxter springs kansas from ireland hoping for a better life james worked for a railroad company which required him to travel a lot He eventually decided to move his family to Howard County for a more settled life. While he worked on the railroad at Howard County, Mary and James became good friends with their neighbors the Wattons who had 7 children. In December, Mary planned a trip to New York City with their son to visit her sister for the holidays. After dropping them off at the train station, James set off on horseback to Howard County through the Osage Trail to prepare for their new home. He planned to stay with the Wattons for a while till he got the house ready. Now Mary reached New York safely and then she wrote to her husband, but she didn't get a response. She was worried and unable to contact him. As I said, it was very difficult to know what was happening once these people left. and one fine day mary received a letter but this letter was not from her husband it was from mrs wotton the letter informed that no one had heard back from james since he left the train station which means something happened to him between the train station and the wotton house 
Mrs. Wharton would say that there were severe weather conditions at the Osage Trail at that time, so anything could be possible. In 1872, cracks began to show in the Bender group. Ma and Pa Bender were already miserable, but now John and Kate also started to show their disconnect. Kate, who was once known for a charming personality and always helpful and cute nature, had now become a very irritated person. If anyone took her services and did not pay, she threatened to curse them. There were whispers in the neighborhood saying that Kate Bender was a witch, and so the Benders stopped getting as many travelers as they would before. But even with this, there was no issue in the Bender house. By that I mean monetary issue. The Benders were somehow making money. Now regarding Kate, it was very difficult to get her in a good mood. It was kind of like a hit and miss. You could go to Kate and ask her for her services and then count on your luck for her to be happy because if she wasn't, then you are not getting her service. In late March of 1872, a group walking along a river stumbled upon a horrifying scene. There was a campsite surrounded by human body parts. This led them to discover a pile of clothes, flesh and bones hidden under a blood-soaked haystack. Nearby, they found a stocking foot, but the body was too decomposed due to animal activity, making it impossible to know who this person was. It was evident the deceased man, dressed in three shirts, had suffered a severe head injury from a blunt object. Later on, a farmer who tried to stop a fight between two violent coyotes ended up grabbing the object that they were fighting over. And this object was a bloody blanket. During that same year, two young brothers went fishing in Big Hill Creek near the Bender cabin. What was supposed to be a simple fishing trip turned into a shocking discovery. They found a torn dress with dark blood-like stain and a men's shirt in nearby bushes. As they continued along the creek, they found the body of a man identified as William Jones. Jones had left his family and was on his way back from teaching at the Osage Mission School when he met his tragic end. His body was found with severe head injuries and a significant neck wound, leaving his wife and children devastated. The community was shook thinking about a good man like William Jones. How could he get murdered? And how could anyone else be safe if a man like him could be murdered? An investigation was launched and later on they would find wagon tracks near the spot where Jones was found, showing signs of carrying a heavy load. In the following months, three more men who went on the same journey never returned. These disappearances caused so many rumors that people were now afraid that there was a murderer in between them. There are a lot of victims to talk about. As I said, there is no exact number on how many murders this family has committed. All travelers who disappeared were usually carrying money or gold or any kind of possession which was taken from them and then the murder was committed. Benjamin Brown of Cedarwall also set off on this Osage Trail headed for the Osage Mission where he planned to get a loan that would allow him to purchase land for his growing family. And this family included his wife and two young children. But unfortunately, he didn't get this loan. As he stood outside this loan office, he started to think of what he could do. How could he make up to his wife? He didn't have the guts to go back home. He couldn't go back home and tell his wife that it didn't work out. He had to find another way. So instead of going back home, he decided to go to Independence, thinking that maybe he could have a better life there. And in order to go to Independence, he had to go through the Osage Trail. And you can imagine which family he met there. Sometime later, Mary, who had not heard from her husband, was heartbroken and she decided to go and look for him. And when she came, she stopped at the small inn for some food and rest. That was the Bender Inn. Mary was so warmed and so happy that she met this family that she had no idea what was coming to her. 
by 1873 sheriff leroy had received numerous letters from worried families reporting that their loved ones had gone missing after traveling the osage trail the growing number of disappearances troubled him and also the others a lot of people were worried that strange things were happening there and they had no idea who was behind this but sheriff leroy didn't talk much about it publicly he wanted everyone living in kansas to feel safe and to be able to travel without being worried the bender family's terrifying spree continued unnoticed until march of 1873 when a young man named George Longcore accompanied by his 19 month old daughter Mary Ann set out on the Osage Trail towards Iowa George had recently lost his wife and he wanted to move closer to his family he made the mistake of stopping at the Bender Inn that night and sadly no one ever saw George again this disappearance triggered a series of events that would finally put a stop to the Bender family's killing spree or at least as we know of now George's friend Dr William York became crucial in uncovering the truth Dr York was a respected figure in independence he was known for his successful medical practice and he also had a tough past having been a prisoner of war but eventually he settled down with his family in Kansas In March of 1873, Dr. York planned to visit his parents in Fort Scott, intending to collect debts from friends in Oswego and Osage Township along the way. When George Longcore failed to reach Iowa as expected, his family and friends grew concerned. Dr. York had heard about this abandoned wagon and horses similar to what his friend had. This alarming news caught the attention of the locals, stirring suspicion about the disappearance along the Osage Trail. Dr York had no idea that a lot of people were going missing all he knew was that his friend was missing he began to piece together this puzzle and unknowingly stepped into the area of the bloody bender family blood was found on George Longcore's abandoned wagon but neither George nor his daughter could be seen witnesses mentioned seeing a large man leaving the wagon and Dr York was intrigued with the situation and he decided to investigate further and find out what happened to his friend on march 3rd 1873 dr york stayed overnight at his brother's place in independence the next day he got back on his journey planning to examine this wagon and horses to figure out what exactly happened he was expected to return home within 10 to 14 days and you can imagine what may have happened Upon reaching Oswego, Dr. York identified this wagon but found no trace of George or his daughter. Search parties scoured the area but they couldn't find any clues. Dr. York suspected some foul play was involved and he decided that he was going to do a thorough investigation. After a week, Dr. York cut his trip short, returning home by March 11th instead of his planned date that was 18th. But while he was returning, he made one mistake he stopped at the bender family inn because of this dr york never returned again now dr york had not returned home and his wife mary was getting worried one fine day a visitor came knocking at her door he said that dr york had planned to come back again and do another thorough investigation but he had not yet returned so they wanted to know why didn't he come what had happened to him and that's when mary found out that her husband had actually left the area to come back home but he just never reached mary tried to convince herself that everything was fine things got delayed maybe he got stuck somewhere or maybe he met someone on the way anything could be possible maybe that's why he was late he would come back home nothing had happened to him she kept telling herself that as days passed dr york never came back home and unfortunately the family had to agree that he was gone after dr york's disappearance his wife and brothers realized that something was wrong because it was just not him so many other travelers were going missing after this local started investigating and they started all this by discussing at a school board meeting 
and guess who was there at this meeting pa bender and john junior but they didn't seem worried i guess they believed that this was just something random a discussion would happen because many times before the same thing had happened people had come out people were talking and then the benders would just go around with their way no one ever suspected the benders of doing anything what they didn't realize is that this victim of theirs came from a very important family dr york's two brothers were colonel ed york and alexander m york a member of the kansas state senate colonel york quickly organized a search party of 75 men who searched the area for dr york and in march of 1873 tracked him to the benders inn on march 28 1873 colonel york arrived at the benders inn he told them that his brother was missing and he just wanted to talk to them now the benders admitted that yes he did stay with them but then he left the very next day so they have no idea what happened to him after that colonel york agreed that this was possible and then stayed with them for dinner on april 3rd he came back after he found out that a woman ran from the inn after ma bender had threatened her with knives now ma bender could not understand english or at least that's what she portrayed to the others the younger benders denied this claim they said that nothing like this had happened when york repeated the claim ma bender got so angry that she started screaming and cursing and that's when everyone realized that ma bender actually knew english at least far more than what she was leading on before this could go out of hand kate said come back tomorrow i'll do a reading and then i'll find out what exactly happened to dr york now this was late at night there was no proof saying that the benders had done something and so unfortunately they all had to leave the next day the group returned and kate claimed that she tried to find out but she couldn't feel anything she couldn't find anything important now suspicion lingered and edward york questioned about other missing individuals did kate see any of them john junior tried to spin this topic but unfortunately it didn't work Around the same time now neighboring communities also started making accusations saying that a lot of things were happening around here things that should not have happened The Osage Township arranged a meeting for all the families to come and then discuss what was happening and in this meeting were Pa Bender and John Junior After discussing the disappearances including that of William York they decided to obtain a warrant and search every single homestead between Big Hill Creek and Drum Creek Now York had a very strong suspicion that the Bender family had something to do with it but he couldn't directly go to the Benders and so he decided that he's going to check every single homestead which included the Benders 3 days after the township meeting A man named Billy Toll was driving cattle past the Bender property when he noticed that the inn looked as if it was abandoned. The farm animals looked unfed, it looked very dirty and very messy. Now Billy reported this to the township trustees and they decided to go and check up on the Benders. This group also included Colonel York. When the party arrived at the inn, they found the cabin empty of food, clothing and any personal possessions. the benders were gone this happened on may 1st the benders had seemingly left their properties days earlier news of the missing travelers reached sheriff leroy dick prompting him to gather a group of 50 men to investigate the bender home they found dr york's glasses hidden hammers and a knife with dried blood they also found the trap door leading down to the cellar reeking of death Now underneath the trap door there was an empty room there was this disgusting smell coming from that room the smell of death they did find blood but they didn't find any bodies and while searching they made their way to ma bender's vegetable garden and apple orchard there they would find dr york buried in a shallow grave and close to him were 10 other bodies many of those were men with one being a woman mary and one other being the child that was mary ann unfortunately mary ann's body didn't look as if she was struck by something 
but rather it seemed like she was buried alive all the bodies had similar wounds a hole in the skull and a cut throat the hammer found matched the injuries on the victims thousands of people arrived at the bender farm seeking answers trying to find their missing loved ones local suspected that others were involved that is other people in the area now rudolf brockman was one of the people who was accused of helping the benders but unfortunately they couldn't find any evidence and so he was let go years later rudolf faced a separate conviction of rape and murder of his own daughter and that's when he received a 20 year prison sentence to this date we are not sure if rudolf had something to do with the bender family what they also found in the house was a prayer book and inside was a note written in german which was later translated as it read the name joanna bender born july 30 1848 john gebart came to america on july 1 18 Big Slaughter Day, Jan 8th, and hell departed. This didn't make much sense to people. Now the Kansas paper carried this story like crazy. In fact, there was also a $2,000 reward that was put out in order to find the Bender family. As the news spread, more and more people started coming to the Bender house. They started looking out for things, they started picking up souvenirs that they could, and before long, Everything from the Bender house was either destroyed or taken away. The Bender family's horrifying deeds made headlines worldwide. People started coming forward and sharing their near-death experience. One woman said that she had asked for a refund and ended up in a scary séance with the Benders waving weapons around. Another man noticed blood stains at his dinner table and left when threatened. A priest felt uneasy seeing Pa Bender with a hammer. A few others also said about how they escaped these narrow attacks. All these accounts helped authorities understand what the benders were up to. Basically, they were trying to find people who had a lot of money or a lot of gold. They would trick these people to come, they would murder them and take everything. But the people who were going down this Osage trail did not always have a lot of money, at least not enough to get them killed. I mean, not a lot, but not enough to get them killed so there is also this belief going around that maybe the benders were committing some murders for the fun of it and not because they were actually trying to get money out of these people the money was a bonus in the 1880s a man resembling pa bender was arrested in idaho for murder but it was never confirmed that it was him this man when he found out that he was being taken he tried cutting off his foot and he died right there his body was found much much later and by then it was too decomposed and they couldn't figure out if it was actually pa bender later on two women were arrested for theft claiming to be ma and kate bender they were brought back to kansas for identification a group of locals who had known the benders couldn't agree if these women were actually ma and kate bender and because they couldn't come to a proper conclusion it would be wrong to arrest someone who had nothing to do with the murders if they were ma and kate bender then they got lucky because they were let go free and if they weren't then thank goodness for that because no one deserves to be punished for someone else's crime the tale of the bloody benders was so popular across america that in 1961 a museum was created in cherrywell now they built an exact replica of the cabin and place the 1800s antiques and furniture inside it kind of gives you the feeling of how the exact cabin looked like three of the bender family hammers were donated by a local family but the museum would later be shut down in 1978 after so much of controversy going around the bender cabin it was finally torn down and a fire station was built in its place the case of the bloody benders remains as a big mystery No one knows what happened to them. Some say that the family fled together, while some others say that they fled separately. The most popular theory says that Ma and Kate Bender escaped separately, while Pa and John Jr. escaped on another place. But there are also certain theories that say that the family just ended up together somewhere and then they started this whole killing spree all over again. 
Now, unfortunately, we would never know if this was true or not, because after that day, the benders would never be seen again. A big thank you to all my fellow listeners who have been listening to all my episodes. Thank you so much. Your listens, your support means a lot. If you love my podcast, if you love the stories that I put out, then please do follow me on whichever podcasting platform you are listening from, and please do leave a rating. It will really help me a lot. You can listen to me on other platforms, including Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and any other podcasting platform. If you are in India, you can always listen to my podcast on Gana or Jio Savan. If you love to listen to strange and mysterious stories, then follow me on Instagram and YouTube, where I put out reels on such stories. These are completely different from the ones that I put out on my podcast, so do follow me on them. If you love travel, you can follow me on my travel channels. I'll link them also in the description. Until then, stay kind and stay safe out there.